Drew is best known for his power, so that audiences are motivated to take action. Presence, so that people are intrigued with his message. Personality, he is personable and enjoyable. Passion, because you want an expert that loves what he does. Perception, so that he can personalize his message to meet the needs of your audience. What I do intend on talking to you today about is seven habits of non-performing employees or seven reasons why employees don't perform. The reason why employees don't do what you want them to do is because you're not telling them what you want them to do. Goals answer three very specific questions. Who are you? Where are you going? How will you get there? You must have employee goals and objectives, your job descriptions, and in one other vital document, and that is your policies and procedures. Reason number three, employees don't understand that there's a negative consequence. TAN, time frame, action step, negative consequence, the manner in which you can tell your employees that there is an issue. So if you have an employee that's coming to work late for the past two or three weeks, what you need to say to them is, Adam, I need to talk to you about your tardiness. In the last two weeks, I've noticed that you've been late three times, time frame. I need you to come into my office again because I need to talk to you if in fact you come in late one more time. Action step. And Adam, if you come in one more time in the next five business days, whether it be one minute or two minutes late, you're going to get a written warning for not doing what I've asked you to do. Is that understood? Negative consequence. Number five, lack of recognition. I will tell you right now that part of the reason why some of you are having issues is because you're not recognizing your employees for their efforts. Why is it you want your children growing up saying pleases and thank you? Why is it that they must be courteous, kind, and considerate to all of their friends, good, bad, or indifferent? Why is it you can walk across the street to Spruce Street and you can watch Albert Pujols or Jim Edmonds strike out and Tony La Russa says, don't worry about it, you'll get him the next inning. Kurt Warner or Mark Bolger can go ahead and throw an interception for the Rams and Mike Martz will say, don't worry, we'll get him the next set of downs. Why is it most of you in this room will go to church on Sunday and your deacon, your minister, your priest will say it is right to give thanks and praise and then all of a sudden you go to the workplace and it stops. It's all non-existent. I will tell you right now, business is a kaleidoscopic mess, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to start practicing what we are preached to. The children, professional sports, education, we need to use that in the workplace. Goals and using the SMART formula will help you plan a new future. When I do time management courses, I use the acronym of PLAN so that you can go from the present moment to a better future because plan simply means plan to live and never be unhappy. If you don't think that it is important to set time and you don't think that it's important to set goals, I want you to think of it this way. You need to realize value in elements of time. To realize the value of a year, ask a student who has failed a grade. To realize the value of a month, think of the mother who has just given birth to a premature baby. To realize the value of a day, ask a daily wage laborer with children to feed. To realize the value of an hour, ask the two lovers that are waiting to meet. To realize the value of a second, ask the person that just missed the commuter train. To realize the value of a half a second, realize the value of the person that just missed a head-on collision. To realize the value of a millisecond, realize the value of the person that just took second place in the Olympic Games. If you don't think that time is important, let me leave you with this. Yesterday, is history. 
Tomorrow is simply a mystery. Today is a gift, and that's why they call it the present. <laughs> Business correspondent, professional actor. If you were to bring me into your organization, I go by a rule from one of my favorite TV shows of all time, and that is I Love Lucy. And I'll leave with one last question, and that is, what did Ricky say when he walked into the room and saw Lucy doing something incredibly stupid? Before he says explain, and I heard it over here, he put his hand on his cheek and he said, what he say? Ay, 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 ay. That's correct. Ay, 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 ay. My Ricky Ricardo rule for you when you bring me into your organization is one, informal. I'm extremely informal. You'll see the tie, and I will do the things that will make them sit back, relax, and get the right answers that they're looking for. Number two, informational. I will provide the information, not just boilerplate, but specific to what the needs are so that everybody walks out of that room with one thing. Three, engaging. And I know if you English majors, it's spelled the end. I'm a professional, don't try this at home. But I will engage your folks with interactive exercises and ways in which they can walk out of there and make it memorable. And lastly, it will be innovative. And I will give them new ideas that they could use in the workplace today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you. God bless. To get winning results for your organization, call Coach Results Drew Stevens at 877-391-6821 or visit www.gettingtothefinishline.com.